I would like to welcome you to episode number two of A Progressive Revolution. I'm your host, Elliot Bernard, and today we're going to be covering four different stories. And we're going to start off with, of course, the Mac the Macklemore controversy. So the NRL Grand Final is going on, well, as of recording, it's going on uh, today, and Macklemore was invited to uh, perform at the NRL Grand Final, and fun fact, it was he was actually voted by the NRL fans, so just a bit of a thing. Um, now, the song that Macklemore has chosen to sing is the 2012 hit song, Same Love, which is about gay marriage, funnily enough. Um, now, of course, this is the part where, um, you know, the, the free speeches are going to come out and they're going to defend Macklemore and they're going to say, this is great, we love free speech, let, let Macklemore speak. Of course they didn't. They all came out and said they wanted to ban this, including Mr. Free Speech himself, Tony Abbott. Now, what I find amusing about all this is that it amazes me that these people only want free speech when it suits them. So when you agree with a guy like Tony Abbott, you should be allowed to speak because it's free speech. He'll come out and he'll advocate for you and, you know, for example, right now, we don't want gay marriage. We're being bullied, oh, you know, we, um, <clears throat> we, we demand to be able to speak out against gay marriage because of whatever reason you want to come up with. And then what, am what amuses me is that the minute you disagree with them, it's ban it, ban that speech, ban that performance, ban anything that's going against me. But what happened to free speech? I thought, I thought you were for free speech. Apparently you're not. Apparently you're only for free speech when it is in your own interest. The other thing to mention for the Macklemore story as well is that um, the guys that were against the Macklemore concert fucked up to the extent that it actually... Um, keep in mind, the storm was released in 2012. What actually happened was, was that it went to the top of the iTunes charts like in the last few days, which is amazing. So these guys who were um, attacking Macklemore have ended up actually helping his Kim, which I thought was awesome awesome twist of fate. Now, the reason why I did this story, one, because it's obviously political, because I wouldn't normally do a story like this, um, but just shows you the hypocrisy of these people. These people are not genuine actors. These people only care about their own ideology and their own beliefs. They don't care about facts, reason, consistency, logic. They only, they only, they, they only believe things to the extent that it benefits them. The minute it doesn't, they're going to flip-flop the other direction. And this is why a story like this is important. And if they've showed nothing else, Tony Abbott and the rest of his free speeches that are against this, if they've shown nothing else, they're total hypocrites. Now look, I have... Now, I personally don't care if you agree, with me, d agree or disagree with me. You can say whatever you want. If you want to sing an NRL grand final about um, against same-sex marriage, that's great. Free speech. Now, <clears throat> now another thing that came out of this... Um, I think it was Peter Dutton who said that um, we should have we should have performance for same-sex marriage or against same-sex marriage. Now, two things. One, these are the same guys that say, well, we shouldn't politicise the event. By doing that, you are by definition politicising the event. Macklemore choosing that song, whether that be for the campaign or not, doesn't necessarily have to be politicised, just he, he made the song and it was popular. So, I don't know what you want him to do about that. Choose a different song. Um, or... And the other thing is as well is that this whole equality of debate, it's like saying that you should have a panel where half the panel's for climate change and the other half is not for climate change. That is not an equal debate. Having 97 people for climate change and three people against climate change, that would be that would be an equal debate. So for example, for this, if you wanted to have seven performers for same-sex marriage and uh, three people that are against, that's based on uh, not voting polling, but that's just based on uh, polling for same-sex marriage in general. If you were to have that concept, then that would be equal. Having one-on-one -on -one is not equal. In fact, even if you, even if, even if you go to the more conservative numbers, which, are, which is based on who's actually going to vote, it's what, still about 60%? So what, you're going to have six and four? I, I don't, anyway, so um, these people don't care about logic, reason, or anything. Uh, they just care about their own political beliefs and ideology. Um, at least people like me at least want some consistency. And if you want to go out there and have a song against gay marriage, fine, that's your right and that's your free speech. And I'm personally not going to ban you from doing that, because then 
Because look, at least then we're having a battle of ideas. These people are not interested in a, genu a genuine battle of ideas. They're only interested in their own ideology and their own beliefs. And that's the bottom line. Okay, now for some international news. <clears throat> so for those who don't know, Angela Merkel retained her chancellorship and, of course, won a fourth term as said chancellor. But that was not the main story out of the out of the election. Now, I'm not going to go through all of the numbers and all the different seats and stuff. Um, there was sort of a surprise, I guess, winner, I guess, in a way. So basically... Um, AFD, which is alternative, which I believe is alternative for Germany, they are um, they are they are part of the far right populist right, I guess, um, no shit, and they're basically an anti-immigration party, and they basically represent a lot of things that Germany hasn't had represented, haven't haven't had represented in the Bundestag for fifty years. So this was a huge deal, and for those wondering, they actually nearly tripled the amount of votes they got. So they were on, I think it was four, from memory, it was about 4.6. But basically around, they had about 5% of the vote in the 2013 German election. But this time around, they had 12% of the votes. So these guys are growing, and they're now actually the third largest party in the Bundestag based on um, seat numbers. Now, there are 299 seats in the Bundestag, and you have to have at least 5% of the vote in order to have a chance of being represented in the Bundestag. So I just tell you that for the background. Now, why am I personally reporting on this? Well, it shows that the populist right is on the move. Yes, it failed in in France when uh, Macron defeated Le Pen, but it all. But by the same token, it also worked in uh, in terms of Trump. And Trump, well, Trump was all over the place. Um, he pulled from all different sorts of various spices in order to get his victory. Um, so he's not necessarily a pure far right. He's not necessarily a pure right populist because he also did use some left populism as well. Um, but this just shows that <clears throat> around the world, this right populist movement is growing. I mean, you look. I mean, if if we roll back things to Australia, <clears throat> you look at someone like Pauline Hanson who managed to revive her political gr career after not being elected for God knows how many years, and she did it off anti-immigration uh, right. Uh, bar up populist ideas. So this is clearly like a growing trend and we should all be aware of it because if we're not aware of it, we can't fight against it. And that's, anyway, but that's why I still like this is important and that's why I bring to you German news, which is new for this channel. So, yeah. Anyway, but this is something to keep an eye on, basically. Now we're going to go on to... Um, so, media news, which is funny, in a way. Well, the news isn't funny. The news is actually quite disastrous, but um, it's funny that I'm a media channel that's doing... Anyway, so, earlier this week, Channel 7 dismissed a candidate after making sexual harassment complaints. Now, there's a lot to this story, a lot of moving parts, so let's get right into it. So, basically, a recording was, uh, was given to the medium from a cadet in a meeting room, and basically in this meeting room she was told that um, someone had, uh, uh, shortly after she ha herself had given a sexual harassment complaint to one of her older co-workers, someone else had filed a bullying harassment complaint, which we'll get into all of that, so it's a bit of a mess. So basically, um, the cadet journalist was suspended shortly after a sexual harassment claim. She was suspended after allegations of workplace bullying. However, what, what was amazing is that the man behind the allegations says that he never made the allegations in the first place, and he didn't even know his name was on the report. In fact, he was actually friends with this cadet, so they were really good friends. And anyway, so he went... He went and actually re demanded for his name to be removed off the off the report because he'd never made the complaint in the first place. And then um, Seven responded by saying, "Sorry, it's none of your business." So, and then and the best be and the worst bit was was that um, in the beginning of the recording, um, when she was called in, she had um, she actually had a support person with her in the room. Um, but one of the officers, one of the one of the officers, actually said that um, this support it wasn't appropriate for this support person to be in the room. The MEAA, which is the Media Union, actually uh, has actually has come out and said that this was actually a breach of workplace laws and the Seven Enterprise Bargaining Agreement. I have no idea what the second one is, but basically um, they violated a ton of shit. Um, 
Now, this is all really shitty timing for Channel 7, considering that they've just come off a, another scandal where there was an affair between a network CEO and a former staff member, and the handling of that was a complete shambles and a bit of a mess. And then there was a lot of criticism before and afterwards about the way they handled that and about their treatment for women. Now, why am I reporting on this? Well, for a few reasons. One, this is unbelievable. This is I can't believe that this is an actual story that's happened this week. Um, anyone that suggests that this was not over the sexual harassment complaints, you are kidding yourselves. She was. This was so fabricated to get her out. This. This. I mean, come on. That, I don't think that that's as not conspiratorial. That's not controversial to point out. It's clear. That's clearly what happened. I mean, come on. And by the way, it's really funny is that by me doing this video, I'm so throwing away any career plans for Channel 7, but that's good. I didn't plan to work for them anyway, so that's wonderful. Considering this is the second story coming out of Channel 7 about um, treatment of women, it clearly shows that there's a problem in Channel 7. And as well, um, I also should mention, this was out of the South Australia, this was out, this was out of the Adelaide Studios, which I'm not going to lie, when I heard that, I was like, that somehow doesn't surprise, I don't know why that doesn't surprise me. Maybe it's just because I'm from SA and I've, unfortunately had to deal with their media. I was actually saying to someone yesterday that I feel like um, SA Media is the worst out of all media around the country, but I also have, I also have watched every state media, so maybe someone can send me something that's worse. But this is an unbelievable story. Like, you, like I mean, this is 2017 and this shit's still happening. This is amazing. Now, what was really nice is that, in fairness, they all had intended to do so, was that uh, Channel 9, ABC... I don't know about I don't know about the other channels, but basically, um, a lot of people did stories about this. So that's fantastic. Get the story out there. This is ridiculous. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, a story like this. Now, I again was not planning on doing a cadet journalism ship at Channel Seven, but if I ever decided to do that, I wouldn't go to Channel Seven. Now, this completely puts me off going to Channel Seven. Completely puts me off. So I wouldn't want to go to Channel Seven after this, and neither should you, to be honest, uh, until they get their shit together. Now the problem, now the other problem that I have with this is, is that this, this is clearly a systemic problem in Channel Seven, but it also shows that this magical thing called sexism still exists. It shows that um, anyone that says that women already have equal treatment is, is either full of shit or super ignorant. But the point is, is that if shit like this happens. I'm not saying it doesn't happen to men, but I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if it happened uh, disproportionately to women. Is all I'm saying. And feel free to fact check that, as I don't have the numbers in front of me. So. But yeah, so anyway, this is an important story and we should definitely keep an eye on this. So, I think this means Channel 9 is the only only channel to not have something coming out of it this year. I mean, it's a fairly low bar. I mean, Channel 9, A, haven't gone out of business, nearly gone out of business, and B, haven't had a ton of sexual harassment complaints. So, good win for Channel 9, really, isn't it? And they get to report on all this and then just like, winning by default. Woo! Now, let's go to my favourite story of the week. So last week, there was this awards thing called the Ernie's. Now, I had never heard of this award show before, and I was super interested to learn what it was about. <laughs> so it, sounded, it sounded amazing. So the, the Ernie's is an award show that's gift, it's, it's known as the most dishonourable award you can receive in Australia. And basically what it is is that um, they will give awards out for the most sexist comments or actions, I guess. And they will have nominees, and they will read out uh, the quotes people have said, or done, again, I guess, and they will give they will uh, give the winner based on audience uh, reaction, which is awesome. Now, I didn't know this, was, this existed, and this is the most amazing thing of the last week. Hands down, this is hilarious. I love this story. This is awesome. Um, so... <clears throat> I'll just really quickly run down some of the awards, because some of these are awesome. So, um, they used to have this award called the Clinton Award, and it, and it's for, and it was for, um, most consistent sexist, or the most notorious, or the guy who had done, who had done it the most. And they renamed it, they renamed it the Trump Award, and the inaugural winner of the Trump Award, lo and behold, was Mark Latham, what a king surprise. Um, it's funny, actually, they didn't... On the on the on the articles about this story, they actually didn't give any examples, but I'm not that shocked. Uh, so Andrew Bolt won the media award to the shock and surprise of no one. Apparently, apparently he's a regular at the at these awards. Um, and this was about what he wrote. So he wrote a um, he wrote an article in response to the sexual harassment uh, report that was released about universities. 
And this is what he said. This is this is amazing. This is this is unbelievable. Yes, we should be shocked and visibly upset that the commission perpetrated perpetrated such a hoax. We should be shocked and upset that not one university boss had the brains or guts to call out this fraud of a study. So to the surprise and shock of no one, he won the reward for that one. Uh, car company Ford also won an award after he blamed car faults on the way women drove. It's amazing. <laughs> The um, So, the former head of the Australian Federation of Islamic Councils won in the clerical and celebrity category, which is a weird combination, said, Using balance against women is a last resort for men, step free after counselling, buying her chocolates or taking her to dinner. What the fuck? These people still exist? Jesus. Um, and they even have an award called the Elaine one, which is specifically given to women. And she won a tr and she won a trophy and so she so she won the award by describing the gender pay gap as a myth and the fault of life choices. Well, first of all, the, it's literally not a myth according to facts, logic, and according to facts, um, studies, and all those other wonderful, lovely things. And bullshit, it's life. I mean, yeah, in fairness, right? Because this this is the problem with this statement is that there is a like a salt. There's like a pinch of truth in this, in the sense that yeah, there are obviously going to be some women that. Um, we will have less money because they have made life choices. But to say to say that the to say that um, sexism is not a systemic problem is is a dick move, especially when you're a woman. I thought it was funny that, that the sports awards called the Warning Award. I don't have an opinion on that. Right. So um, now they have this thing called the Gold Ernie, obviously in reference to the Gold Logie, I guess. Um, so. Port Stevens Mayor Bruce McKenzie was the lucky winner, and that was um, so he won this. It says it's not for things said necessarily, it's for things done. And this this is amazing. This is uh, this guy said the balls of this guy is unbelievable. So um, so he had a domestic violence shelter named after him. All right, we're starting off good. We're good after he admitted to assaulting his partner. Jesus Christ. Okay, these people still exist in the country. So I don't anyone that says sexism doesn't exist. Full of shit. I just described it to you. It literally still exists. Anyway, I bring you that story because it's awesome, it's amazing, it shows that this shit still exists, and most importantly, it's hilariously unbelievable. Like, I'm not sure if I should I'm not sure if I should find this more disgraceful or more funny. I'm actually kind of conflicted how I should be reacting to that. That's unbelievable. It's unbelievable! It's amazing! It's probably the most amazing thing I've read all week. Maybe the most amazing thing in the last couple of of months. I don't know, but that's awesome. So that's now my new favorite award show. And the best bit is as well, um, <laughs> as usual, no one was there to collect their awards, which to my response is, of course, of course, of course they didn't. No shit they didn't. Why would they come up and, like, it's like, yeah, like, do you think these guys are proud of their sexism? I don't know, some of them might be, but anyway, so that, that, that's, um, that's amazing. Amazing thing of the last couple of months. All right, well, thank you for watching and tuning in to episode two of A Progressive Revolution. Let me know down below on the episode what it is you think. So, yeah, so you have the option, as of course, as usual, to watch the full episode or um, certain segments will go up. There will be some that will be that will stay exclusive to the main show, because obviously if I just put all the episodes up, if I just put all the segments up separately, you just watch that, so I need the views on the full episode, so that's what we're going to do, so it'll be a mixed gem, um, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next time for episode three, and I'll see you guys later.